Howdy. I guess this is to or fro. I don't know which. Which is to or fro. Anyway, it's really good to be here. Wow, what a nice crowd. Happy Sabbath. What a beautiful day. Okay, so we are 10 to 15 degrees warmer than we would like, but uh, don't worry, that's going to change real quick, and fall is on the way. Um, I think yesterday we were 10 days to atonement. Buddy, how many days to the feast? 23. 23. So is everybody excited, uh, ready to go? Uh, I think we all are really looking forward to that. Uh, anyway, welcome to all of you. I'd certainly like to welcome everybody on the webcast and say happy Sabbath to you and uh, glad that you're visiting with us today. It's, it's nice that we have technology and we can share with so many and have, uh, you know, uh, uh, have opportunities to grant, give opportunities for those who are not as privileged as uh, a lot of us are. And I think we take it for granted a lot that we're able to meet and get together. You know, there's some that just don't ha have that opportunity and, um, uh, you know, they're uh, two or three hundred miles away from a, a place to, uh, to meet uh, or can't because of health issues. So, uh, what a blessing it is. So um, anyway, it's uh, really good to, to be here today and uh, hope to visit and hope we'll stick around for potluck and, uh, and visit with one another. Uh, remember, Sabbath is, you know, sundown to sundown. So if you want to stay late, it's what you're welcome to do that. Uh, you, there are usually some interesting conversations going on around here about three or four o'clock. So that's always a, a really good thing. Today, uh, to begin with, turn with me to a scripture over here in the book of Psalms, chapter 119. 119, Psalms 119. And we're going to read a, a verse that, uh, when we read it, you're going to say, okay, um, is that really the way it is? But yes, they, it is. In verse 165, Psalms 119, 165, it reads, Great peace have they which love thy law, and nothing shall offend them. Nothing shall offend them. Unfortunately, offenses happen, don't they? Uh, have you ever been offended? Have you ever offended someone? Well, we all, the answer to both those questions is yes and yes. We have offended and we have been offended. And that's on us, isn't it? Uh, when we offend others, it's because we're, we're, we're probably not taking the care that we should with our words. And a lot of times, obviously, it's inadver inadvertent. Sometimes people do things that are careless, and we've all done that. Uh, other times people are blunt. Others are insensitive and, and sometimes very mean-spirited. And we've all experienced probably the gamut, the gamut of all of that. And while we cannot control the intentions of other people and what happens, what we can control, though, is how we act and how we react. That's what I want to talk about today. And that is how we, you know, let's not be easily offended. And let's not offend others, but let's not be easily offended and let's talk about that concept. Because we can, it's a choice, to be real honest with you. It's a choice. We can choose to be offended or we can choose to not be offended. It is a choice. Uh, and you say, yeah, but sometimes people are mean, and that is, that's really true. And we're going we're gonna to talk about that, so maybe some principles and guidelines. The Bible has an awful lot to say about offenses. If you want to get out your uh, concordance and look at the word offense, and then offenses, you know, it probably covers one and a half uh, you know, pages in, the, in your concordance. So there's a lot to be said about it. And I don't intend to uh, go, through a, go through all of those, though I will refer to quite a few scriptures. For those that are note-taking, you will be busy. But I do want us to turn over here to Matthew 24 because of something that Jesus says, very realistic, uh, very realistic. And, you know, pro I guess you would say very prophetic in Matthew 24. And we want to begin here uh, in verse 10. Of Matthew 24. Well, let's actually get to the paragraph break here in verse 9. And it says, Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted, and shall kill you, and shall, you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. Now, we know specifically, folks, that happened to the disciples, didn't it? That specifically happened to, uh, you know, the Apostle Paul. That ended up happening to a lot of Christians. You can read uh, the history of the Church of God, the history of, uh, of the Christian church. Um, you know, those that are followers and disciples of Jesus Christ, and there's been a lot of that to take place. 
He's specifically referring here, you know, to the signs of the end of the age. So um, I would say that that being the case, we ought to be prepared for that. And we, we uh, actually look at our nation and see the conditions of things taking place. And we begin to realize, I'd never thought that this would have maybe uh, uh, actually be affected in our day or my day. But guess what? This could happen where we're, we're, we're delivered up, where we are... Uh, um, you know, for standing for biblical principles, we could be put in prison. And, you know, we, we're just kind of, uh, that's kind of where, where we are, really, realistically. Verse 10 then says, And then shall many be offended, and shall betray one another, and shall hate one another. And many false prophets shall arise, and shall deceive many. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many will wax cold. So this is a time, you know, a time and a, a frame of mind. And I, I just have to say that you and I live in this time frame when many shall be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another. And is there a lot of hate going on in the world? Absolutely. And if we're not careful, we can, we can hate one another. And we have to be aware of that. You can keep your finger here because... Uh, well, we, we probably won't come back. So let's, I, I want us to turn over here to James for just a brief minute, James chapter 3, uh, before we define what we're, you know, what it, what we're talking about in the definition of an offense and what we're, we want to discuss. But you know, we have to consider this, this mind frame of hate and offenses and accusations and all of those things that go on. And where is this coming from? And, and, and remember, when you get offended... You have to ask yourself, where is this frame of mind? Because, uh, you know, we've just read that those that love the law, nothing shall offend them. But guess what? Realistically, we all get upset. We all get offended to some degree. But it says in verse 13 of chapter 3, it says, Who is a wise man and a dude with knowledge among you? Let him show out of a good conversation his works with meekness of wisdom. And I recommend for all of us that we, we make sure that our, our frame of mind and our mindset is that of peace, uh, meekness, and humility. Uh, we don't need to be battling, fighting, and we certainly don't need strife. And we don't need, we don't need strife uh, in our midst. And we don't need strife in our, in our hearts. It's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's very counterproductive to the spirit that God has given us. But if you have bitter envyings and strife in your hearts, glory not and lie not against the truth, this wisdom descends not from above, but is earthly, sensual, and devilish. For where envying and strife is, there is confusion and every evil work. I mean, that's realistic. You know, that's where, where all of that's going on, where there's strife and confusion. And, uh, you know, uh, boy, uh, thank God for peace. Thank God for peace. And thank God that you and I, as begotten, sanctified, spirit-filled Christians and believers and followers, have the ability and the authority frankly, to overcome offense through God's Spirit. We really do. And to be victors in this and not, not to be offended. But let's be honest. We've all offended others and we've all been offended. Chances are that we can relate to, uh, to that in, in many degrees. Um, and, you know, uh, I'll just name a few things here. Um, we get offended because something someone said or perhaps did to you. Realistic, right? Uh, you didn't get invited to a party that everyone else is going to, and you get offended. That ever happened? Sure. Uh, your boss commends your coworkers and everybody in the office, but not you. And that can be offensive. Don't they, you know, when you're acknowledged, when, when your efforts and your abilities and things are not acknowledged, we, we do get offended if we're not recognized at times. Um, has this ever happened that you, uh, you, you give somebody a, you know, a gift of some kind? It could be a birthday, it could be an anniversary, it could be a, you know, a, a wedding gift or whatever it would be, and you never get a thanks back. And, you, you know, do you ever get upset about that? Uh, I can relate to this next one because I've been on this exactly. Uh, your son sits on the bench the entire baseball game. While the coach's son and all his buddies are playing the whole game. And you're, you know, you're over there, grousing. Anybody ever? Well, never mind. Don't, don't ask. Answer that. 
But it can be so difficult, frankly, it can be very, very difficult to overlook these kinds of annoyances when they come our way. And yet we must. We must follow what the Bible says, and it admonishes us not to be offended. And I will say this word, oversensitive. Because all of us are sensitive, and sometimes all of us are oversensitive. Now, you don't have to turn there, but it, it says this in Ecclesiastes chapter 7, uh, 21 and 22. It says, do not take to heart everything that people say, uh, lest you hear your servant cursing you. And have you ever known people that think everybody's talking about them and everybody's, everybody's after them? Well, I know they're over there discussing me. I know I'm that topic of discussion. But, he's, you know, but Scripture says we're not to take heart to that. Um, for many times also your own heart has known that even you have had, you know, done that similarly to other people. So it's, you know, if we take heed to everything we hear and everything that comes our way, guess what? We would probably be offended at all times. And I think it's imperative for us to recognize that sensitivity or offenses that we might have, we have to recognize it for what it is. It's a symptom of pride. It's a, it's a symptom of pride because it certainly is upon us. And egos get deflated, especially when others point out our mistakes, and we just don't like that. Uh, that is something we don't like, and whether privately or in public. Especially we don't like it when, when you know, publicly we're put down and, and publicly we're, you know, things are said about us. So, you know, it's really an issue. It is an issue of pride. And, you know, Proverbs, over here in the book of Proverbs, chapter 11, And we'll come back to 11 here for another verse. But in 11, Proverbs 11 and verse 2, it reads this. It says, When pride comes, then comes shame, but with the lowly is wisdom. When pride comes, then comes shame. And, you know, we, we get upset. If we're prideful, we are going to get upset over a lot of things. And... You know, we're sensitive. We can be oversensitive, and that's, uh, we're, we're admonished that we're not to do that. But wisdom is to be lowly and humble and, and to recognize that and cut people some slack. Uh, you could read uh, Proverbs 16, 18, which says, you know, pride goes before a destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. Uh, and uh, uh, We are haughty, ego, arrogant people if we're not careful. That is what is what we, we battle against. I believe men battle against ego more than anything else. Uh, Charles has uh, always said this, and you know, when we were involved in the ministerial uh, you know, training program and involved in some of those, those sessions, he would bring up this thing about ego. And, and the acronym for that EGO was edging God out. And that's really what we do when ego takes place, is we move ourselves to the center of everything and God has moved away, and we have to be careful of that. And, you know, you can also write down Proverbs 29, 23, which says, a, my, a, a, a man's pride shall bring him low. Actually, let's read that, though. Chapter 29 and verse 23. We're going to get to some obvious examples here of, th of, of things and, and some approaches, hopefully, that will help us in this in this uh, subject about offenses and being offended and making sure that we're not, uh, not that way. But Proverbs 29, 23 says, A man's pride shall bring him low, but honor shall uphold the humble in spirit. Have you ever met some of those people that, that uh, always have everything in control and in check and uh, they're, they're able to you know, let a lot of the uh, darts and the offenses and things people say just kind of roll off of them and then that's ah, that's no big no big deal oh don't we wish we were all that way but we are really sensitive and we are very we are easily actually we're easily and very sensitively offended by things that people say uh, and we have to recognize I think where that really really uh, comes from when we are offended and sensitive it really shows that we're not really holding on to uh, I believe God's word and God as much as we need to and as we should. Remember what we, we opened with. Great peace have they that love the law and nothing, nothing shall offend them. 
Uh, I'll mention a couple of uh, other scriptures in one in uh, Isaiah, two of them in Isaiah chapter 26 and verse 3, which says, "You will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you." You will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you. Uh, you know, so when, that's powerful. That's powerful. That when, when our mind is on and stayed on the things of Christ, that he gives us peace. And I'll tell you, we need it. We need his peace. We ought to be praying for his peace in our lives all, you know, all the time and that he be there in, in that way, granting us the calmness that we need. Even in adversity and even when, we are, when someone offends us egregiously, and it will happen. And if it's happened already, get ready, it will happen again. You know, we, we, will, we, will, we will see those things happen again. Uh, Isaiah 32, 17 says, And the work of righteousness shall be peace. Shall be peace. And the effect of righteousness, quietness and assurance forever. That's a powerful scripture. That's powerful. The work of righteousness is peace. And, and that is... a. That is an effect and a work. The work of righteousness comes through God's Holy Spirit. Turn, let's go over here to Philippians chapter 4. Philippians chapter 4. And read verses 6 and 7. Because in all of our difficulties with offenses, whether being offended or offending others, there is a very important important thing for us to do and that is it says in verse 6 be careful for nothing be anxious not to be anxious but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving let your requests be made known unto God we need his help if something bothers you if someone has said something that bothers you who do you take it to take it to God <laughs> take it to God just discuss it with him and say, this has happened. What do I do? How should I respond? Now, I know the way that I typically want to respond, right? You, what do we want to do immediately if we've been offended? What do we want to do? We want to retaliate. And we want to retaliate either verbally or physically. Uh, and, you know, you remember the scenes as kids. Shut up or I'll knock you down. Well, come on, do it. And then it's on. You have, this, you have this, this fight fight going on. And, you know, people are, they get offended, they get mad, and, and then they've got to defend their honor. <laughs> but it says, everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God which passes all understanding will keep your hearts and mind through Christ Jesus. And that is the perfect end result but it is so hard for us to really get there and so hard for us to get there. Now, I'm, I'm just going to say, obviously these verses are not telling us that we should never confront um, another person about a serious problem. If you, are, if you are attacked verbally, I will give you a recommendation. Don't respond right then. Go think about it. Because really... And we get down to we get down to what really needs to happen in this is we really ought to take that to God and say, there's something bothering him. What can I do to help solve this problem? And what can we do to, to rectify it? And we take the focus off of us and we turn it to how can I help? And, and I think that's so important for us to do and so important that we do that. Um, <clears throat> there are times when we when we you know, do need to go to our brother. I mean, we're told that in Matthew 18. We have to follow that. And it's a guide. It's a, you know, a guideline for us. However, here's the... Here, confronting others should not be something we are doing on a regular basis. I mean, we don't want to be known as the confronter uh, and the attacker and the... Uh, you know, I've been watching what you're doing. I think you're you know, doing this and doing that wrong. We don't want to be the proverbial man or woman who's just itching... Uh, you know, to uh, all too ready to tell others off and put them in their place. Uh, no one wants to spend time around someone like that, do they? No, they absolutely do not. And then, of course, there are the 
other side of that coin is there are others that aren't confrontational at all. Now, how many here hate confrontation? I mean, you can be honest. I think most of us, really, we hate confrontation. I don't think there's many of us that say, I'm ready, I'm looking for confrontation. I want to fight. But, you know, but sometimes people who are non-confrontational get offended. And rather than pick a fight with the offender, what they do, and this is as bad, I'm just saying this is as bad, they stew about it. They stew and they harbor or start harboring all these e evil thoughts and ill will. That's not good. And these feelings that they have fester and it grows and turns someone into an angry, bitter, miserable person. And it leads to grudges. Not careful. We, are all we all probably know people like that. Uh, we may be those people. And we have all probably seen friendships estranged friendships due, due to this, where good friends now are enemies because of this, and they hold grudges, and, and you know, or at least they're just acquaintances and no longer friends. That's sad. That's too bad. And like I said, the fact of the matter is, and is this, the bottom line is that offenses are going to come our way. When they do, how are we going to respond? When offenses come your way, how are you going to respond? How will you react? We can choose to get upset, or we can choose not to be offended. Those are choices. And I just, we have to choose not to be offended. Let's not be offended. And how do we do that? How do we do that? Well, let's look at some points. Let's go over here to Colossians chapter 3. Colossians chapter 3. You know, this third chapter of Colossians is uh, one of the most basic chapters in the Bible on principles of things for us to avoid and for Christian principles for us to, to have and to act upon and to have part of our, uh, part of our life. In, in verse 12 it says, well, just... Uh, <clears throat> verse 5 says, Mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth, things to put off. I don't want to look at that right now. I'm just saying, there are things that we need to not have. But this, what we're about to read in verses 12 and 13 and 14 and 15 are so important for us. It says, Put on, therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved bowels of mercies. And, you know, blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. Blessed are the merciful. And we need to be full and have bowels of mercy. <clears throat> Humbleness of, uh, excuse me, uh, bowels of mercies, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, and long-suffering. All right, so if we stop right there and we just worked on those things, we would be working on that the rest of our days, I believe. That's a, that's a mouthful of things for us to work on uh, right there. Forbearing one another, which is, means we're putting up with each other and each other's imperfections. And in our imperfections, we, we, we love one another. But sometimes we offend. And we have to forgive one another when that happens. Uh, and, and we have to, to be those that are gentle in that way. Uh, we're told in Philippians, back just a few pages, chapter 2, verse 4 says, or verse 3 says, Let nothing be done through strife or vain glory. But in lowliness of mind, let each esteem others better than themselves. Um, that, if, we, you know, if we really did that to the extent, I do believe a lot of our arguments and confrontations would go away, that we esteemed others better, better than ourselves. And, and we have to value each other. We have to value each other and what each, each other brings, and we're all unique in our personalities. Anyway, back to Colossians 3. It says in verse 14, And above all things put on charity, which is the bond of perfection. Charity, love. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to the which also you are now called in one body, and be you thankful. And be you thankful. 
you know, and we need to, to honestly esteem others better than ourselves. And there's a frame of mind that if we're in it, I believe if, in, if we're in the humbleness of mind, if we're at peace, if we're, if we're really, uh, you know, not in, a, in that confrontational mode, when things come our way, when we are close to God in that way, a lot of this stuff will roll off of our backs a lot easier. And, and, we, and we just have to remember that when we're offended, it's on us. Because nothing is, we're not supposed to be offended by, by anything. And I'm talking specifically here today about, about the way we treat each other, you know, the way we communicate, conversation, and, and the disagreements that we have, and the way that we, we say those things, and the way that we do, it, we do that. And I do believe that one of the best ways to, to keep from being offended is we've got to get the focus off ourselves. That hurt me. Uh, some examples. No one liked my ideas. Why didn't they like my ideas? Uh, he was curt to me. They didn't talk to me at church today. Now, I've had that thought, haven't you? Um, she didn't even thank me for that gift. Why wasn't I considered for that position? Nobody pays any attention to me. And we, we can be offended. And, and really the bottom line is, if, is we get upset because we didn't get our way sometimes. Uh, and it didn't go our way. Or someone points out some of our shortcomings and some of the things that we need you know, that, that we don't like pointed out. We don't like everybody to know all those things. And the question is, do we go to God and ask for His help during those difficult moments? And what is our frame of mind? And we need to ask Him. I really do believe we have to ask Him to help us cultivate a more humble mindset as His children, as His people. And, I, 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 you know, we may not want to hear it, but there are, very, there are many, there, there are a lot of individuals and people who have more expertise in particular areas than you or me. And we, sometimes we don't like to acknowledge that. And we don't, we don't like to do that. And it's hard becoming offended if you're esteeming others better than yourself. It's hard to be offended and va valuing what they have to offer. I think we all should look at around the room here and see the value that everybody brings. And how can you be offended by that? Because everybody brings something. That which every joint supplies. There's, there's, there's no need for us to be offended or jealous or... Uh, uh, or upset. Now, people who are easily offended, frankly, are not, at that moment, I'm not saying maybe not overall, but at that moment that you're in the middle of an offense, you are not strong spiritually. In fact, you are pretty unspiritual at that moment. But we all like to look, I'm in the right, they just offended me. They just said something they shouldn't. Really? The Bible says we're, we, wouldn't, we should never be offended, that those things shouldn't bother us. Uh, and if you, and, and I'm, uh, somehow we take it that when people do that, that they're intentionally doing it. And I think sometimes that's right, but I think the majority of the time it's not intentional. And uh, frankly, we, if we're not careful, are very, over, we're oversensitive about many, many things. And I think there's a reason for that. Because in, a, in, in some of these offenses, maybe, uh, you ever known people that walk around with a chip on their shoulder? They got a chip on their shoulder, you, you know, you, you, they're ready to, ready to fight at the drop of a hat. They're uh, aggravated. They're very quick to interpret even the most innocent comments as offensive. Have you ever thought that, that maybe what's really going on there is that they have some interpersonal struggles that they haven't dealt with and they're just showing and acting that out. If we're actually looking out, we are hopefully through God's Spirit able to start able to recognizing these things and to be able to help. Not to be offended, but turn it the other way. Uh, Proverbs 14, 17 says, He that is soon angry, that would be, that would be me. I have to be real careful of that because I... I that's about how long it takes me to get mad. He that is soon angry deals foolishly. I recognize that. 
But look at this, Proverbs. Let's read here in Proverbs chapter 16. Proverbs 16. And verse 32. He that is slow to anger is better than the mighty. And he that rules his spirit than he that takes a city. That's powerful. That's a powerful scripture. He that's slow to anger is better than the mighty. If we find ourselves easily upset with others, it might be time for us to examine ourselves to see if there's anything going on in our lives that's making us irritable. And then let's fix it. Let's, let's go to God and let's get that straightened out. Um, and, and are we blaming others for offending us, offending us when what we really should be upset with is that we haven't dealt with certain hot button issues in our lives? That's possible. I'm just saying this is not an easy uh, cut and dried uh, topic and subject. There's a lot of issues and things going on in all of our lives. We're all made up so differently with different struggles, different backgrounds, different personalities. And all of that, all of us trying to work together it, it sometimes leads us to having some of these difficulties. But we do need to ask for God's help to move past our wounds and to move, move past our difficulties and to move past uh, being offended and to remove the wedges and the, the situations that divide us. Because we are all one body, the body of Christ. All of us. I mean, all of the church. We're, we're only part of it. We recognize that. There's a problem with being oversensitive, another problem with that. And it's this, it makes it really difficult to receive counsel uh, and will hamper our training and spiritual growth when we are, are that way, being oversensitive. It hampers it. I mean, we're told in Proverbs uh, 4 to take hold, hold fast of instruction and not to let her go, to keep her for she is life. Proverbs 6.23 says that the commandments is a lamp. The law is a light. Reproofs, uh, the reproofs of instruction are the way of life. Now, let's stop and think about that just for a second. Reproofs of instruction are the way of life. Reproofs are when somebody or God says to you what you're doing is not right. Or the Spirit moves within you and you recognize that. What do, we, what do we do? I mean, normally if somebody says that to us, we don't like receiving that from anybody. But do we like receiving reproofs from God? Are we, are we open for that? Because it's a way of life. And um, if we don't like instruction and receiving correction and we don't like changing, then there's one of two reasons. We're either hard-headed and stubborn or we're perfect. Which is it? Where are we? Where are we? Where are we in that? I mean, Hebrews 12, 11 says, no chastening for the present seems joyful, right? Does anybody like to be corrected? As kids, how many of you love spankings? Oh, I was, you know, oh yeah, dad, give me another lick. That felt so good. No, we, we don't like that. We don't like, we don't like that. And it, it you know, it, it, it doesn't seem fun. And it isn't. Nevertheless, as Scripture says, it yields the peaceable fruits of righteousness. And I'm just saying that, you know, we can be offended and, and miss out on lessons for us if we're not careful and, teach, and teaching lessons. Because if we don't respond correctly to those that offend us, then we aren't acting on the Spirit of God and we aren't using Scripture the way we should to help. I believe that it's wise for each of us in our relationships with one another that we have to, we have to take into account each other's backgrounds and the, 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 where we've come from. Uh, every one of you here, here are on a journey, all of us are on a journey with a beginning point of life and then another, another point is a beginning point of our Christian walk and we're not perfect yet. We're, we're still on the journey. 
And there isn't any of us here that is perfect. So don't expect perfection. We all ought to grow in perfection. We are all different. We have different reasons for doing and saying the things we do. Um, and sometimes what seems like an offense may be just, frankly, a major uh, reflection or a difference of personality. Um, i, I got to tell you this story. So the skeletons at home in a conversation and an argument are very loud. And I remember right after Kim and I were married, and we were visiting my folks. Um, they were in Utah, and we lived in Albuquerque, and we went up there for the weekend. And Dad and I were having this, we were, we were having a disagreement, to be real honest with you. And, you know, oh, when you're just full of, and I said, Dad, that can't. Anyway, we're back and forth, and it's loud. And we all stop and look over at Kim, and she's in tears over there on the, what's going on? And the skeletons just got loud. I mean, that's just the way we talked. And it was that we didn't hate each other. We just, we just were loud and, and boisterous. And that uh, was offensive. That was offensive. And sometimes that's, you know, the, the difference of personality, background, and upbringing will, those things will come out in our relationships with one another. It just can't help it. Our insecurities will come out. Uh, a, a, lot of, a lot of our uh, 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 I'm struggling for the word here. A, a lot of the, the challenges and things that have happened to us will eventually come out and it will come out in, in, in different ways. But if we're not careful, we can offend. And we have to take that into consideration. But on the other, hand, other side of it, we all need to cut each other a little slack. Really? Is there anybody here that doesn't want everybody else in the kingdom? We all want each other in the kingdom. I mean, the goal is we all want to be there. So why, why are we so ready to cut people off and, you know, have these, you know, backstabbing moments in our lives? And I do believe that we should cut each other a little slack. There's another thing that I recommend for all of us on this subject of offenses and let's not be offended, and it's this. We need to get rid of our expectations of one another. Sometimes we have expectations that are unreasonable. I should say unfair expectations. We all should expect each, each other to, to walk as Christians, correct? Absolutely. But there might be some unfair expectations that we have of one another. And being oversensitive and offended hinders honest, open communication and frankly undermines relationships with others. If we don't shed those unfair expectations. Often when we, um, when we take an offense, I believe that what's really happening is we're disappointed in others when we see their faults. Aren't you? I mean, you know, it's like... I didn't know he had that fault. <laughs> I didn't know she, I didn't know she act, didn't know she could say that. And we can be offended if we're not careful. The bottom line is, let's read what the Apostle Paul says, and he summed up for us. He, said, he summed up the human condition for us this way in Romans chapter 7. And this is all of us. What we're about to read is where we all land, frankly. And I hope it helps us recognize how we uh, all have shortcomings and we all uh, shouldn't have false expectations of one another. Chapter 7, verse 18. Paul says, for I know. He doesn't say I guess or I think or I might. He says, I know that in me, in, that is in my flesh, dwells no good thing. He, he recognized that. Paul recognized that. And he also knew that the only righteousness he had was that that came from God. That's where we are, right? Our only righteousness is that which comes from God. In me, that is in my flesh, dwells no good thing. For to will is present with me. He'd like to do right. The will to do it, it's there. But how to perform that which is good, I find not. Does anybody else struggle with that? Like Paul? I mean... Yes, I do. All of us, I think, recognize it. All of us struggle. But I do believe that 
if we will remember this, then we will have much more tolerance for one another. If we recognize that in each of us dwells no good thing. I mean, we're, we're not greater than anybody else. We're all going to have faults. When these offenses come, we ought to be able to deal with them. They shouldn't overwhelm us. They shouldn't cause hatred. They shouldn't cause division. We should be able to handle them. And we have to remember Proverbs 18 and verse 19. Proverbs 18 and verse 19. I'm not saying that we uh, go around defending each other. I'm not saying that at all. But when you are offended, recognize, well, he ain't perfect either. Because none of us are. Proverbs 18 and verse 19. Tell me if you think this is right. Tell me if you believe this. A brother offended is harder to be won than a strong city. Let's not offend. But on the other hand, if we're the one offended... How are we gonna how are we gonna respond? Are we are we going to a brother offended is harder to be won than a strong city, and their contentions are like the bars of a castle. That's like impenetrable, you can't get out. <laughs> you can't get out. We we shouldn't offend. We ought to be we have to be real careful. I mean that is so obvious, that is so obvious. What I'm really dealing with today is what do we do on the other hand when we are the one that is receiving and on the, you know, receiving the offense? And, and what does God tell us to do? And how are we supposed to respond? Amos, you know, 3.3, 3, one scripture we all know says, how can two walk together except they be agreed? And, and uh, you know, there, there can be a point where contentions are so sharp that we don't walk together. Let's not have that. Let's not have that. I do hope that we strive for what is mentioned over here in 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 10. 1 Corinthians 1, 10. As we wind up here, just a couple of more verses, a couple of more thoughts. Verse 10 of 1 Corinthians chapter 1 says, Now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you all speak the same thing, and that there be no divisions among you, and that, there, and, that there, and that you be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. Oh, that it were that way. That's a good goal, though, isn't it? Isn't that a good goal? That should be where we walk, right there. That should be how we, we walk. That we, we all speak the same thing. It isn't that we all speak... You know, uh, agree, agree uh, um, on the same political. You know, that doesn't mean we're all agreeing politically. No, no. When we speak the same things, we're speaking the things that Jesus Christ. I mean, that we're speaking all in agreement with Him. That's the same thing. That we're all on the same page with the principles here. That we all speak the same thing, and that we act towards one another as we should, and that we're perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. And by the way, in the same spirit, because there is only one spirit, and it's God's spirit. And that we walk according to, the, to, those, to those things. And I, we have to come to the point, brothers and sisters, where we assume good motives of one another where we assume good motives of others. We must assume that, that the person who offended us has our best interest at heart. We have to, we have to get to that point. Uh, a lot of times we're not there. Um, we, we think that they're trying to get us when maybe we should be thinking, thinking and maybe we should say, well, you know, there's a point or two of what that person is saying. It, you know, that's right. I need, to, I need to work on that. But we usually don't take it that far. I don't think any of us ever, uh, well, I shouldn't say never, that would be incorrect, intentionally try to hurt one another. I don't believe that is the case. Um, I have to admit to you that I am the king of sticking my foot in the mouth. Okay? I'm the king of that. 
Um, I have a tendency to talk before the brain is engaged. And I often give myself, uh, uh, don't give myself the time that I need to before I speak. And the mouth is in gear before the brain is. And then that's when offenses come a lot of times, right? When we, when we don't, you know, when we don't think our way through a situation and a problem. We have to think our way through everything that comes our way. We don't react. We think our way through. That's the way it should be done. It's the way it is. Um, uh, I'm not a surprise, though. And I have to admit that some of the things I blurt out don't come out all that well. But I tell you what I'm grateful for is I'm grateful for friends who will give me the benefit of the doubt. And I think that's what we all want. We want friends who will give us the benefit of the doubt. <coughs> And I don't have to worry that they're going to assume the worst when interpreting my words and actions. And they'll know that we're all on the same team and they recognize that. Uh, I know that if I do say something with tacky, tackiness and uh, that's inappropriate, they will see it, that for, for what it is and they will not make more of it than necessary. And I believe that is the same kind of understanding I need to extend to others. You know, we're told... In Romans chapter 15, I won't turn there, it says we're to bear the infirmities of the weak. We all, we all need to help each other. We all need to bear one another. <laughs> help each other. And, and when we're weak, when someone is weak, then we need to be strong for them. And when we're strong, then we need to be there for those that are weak. It's what, it, what we should do. And I read this in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. A beautiful chapter here describing the body of Christ, of which, you know, re please read that on your own. It talks about the body of Christ. But I believe this is where we need to be. Verse 25 says that there should be no schisms in the body, which means divisions. But that the members should have the same care one for another. You know, that's that we all care for one another in a, in a loving, in the same way, in a caring way. And whether one member suffer, all the other members suffer with it. And when one member is honored, then all the members rejoice. We don't get jealous, we're happy. We're happy when people are honored. We're happy to see that. If others offend you, I suggest that, they, that we consider that they didn't do it and didn't intend to. And I suggest again that we take a few moments and think things through before we respond. Remember, we all in this room have unique personalities. They're all different. And I'm not suggesting, uh, you know, I'm just saying if we allow for the, those differences and ignore the unpleasant mistakes and the things that come out wrong, realizing that we, we all love one another and we're all on the same team, we're all, on, all in the body of Christ, and that we should learn to enjoy one another then we, we can bear through those things. I'm not suggesting at all that we wink at sin. I'm not suggesting that. There's a time to close our eyes, plug our ears, and flee from evil. I mean, scripture plainly tells us that. There is a time to express being hurt or troubled by something or somebody or some event. Absolutely. But I'm just saying, if we get offended at every little thing that comes along and that somebody says to us, how will we ever interact with others? And how will we ever be able to reach the world and preach the gospel if we're so offended by one another? Being easily offended or determining we're not going to be offended, one of those two, that's our choice. That's our choice. Let's go back here and close here where we started. Psalms 119. Read it again. Psalms 119, 165. It says this, Great peace have they which love your law, and nothing shall offend them. Just think of it. Being unoffendable. How'd you like that? How would you like to be a person that is unoffendable? 
Wow, that has repercussions for us. For our friends and for our neighbors as well. Happy is the man who is not easily offended. And happier are the people around him.